So the previous lesson was about factoring. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to start solving equations where factoring is going to be required. And so before we do that, we're going to look at a thing called the zero uh, factor property. Basically, zero times any value is going to equal zero. So what we're going to do here is looking at these examples I have right here, you can see that you have x plus 3, and what's happening is it's being multiplied by x plus 5. And we're trying to figure out what makes this equal 0. So the way the zero factor property works is you look at each factor individually and ask yourself, okay, well, what would cause this to equal 0? Same thing with the other factor. What would cause that to equal 0? And so then you just solve those equations. So here I'll subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals negative 3. And then the other one will subtract 5. And so then x equals negative 5. So those are my answers to, the, to that equation up here. Because if I plug in negative 3, this factor will go to 0. The other factor would turn into a 2. But that doesn't matter because 0 times any value is going to equal 0. So if I plug in negative 3, this would turn into a 0. It doesn't matter what the other factor is. The whole thing would equal 0. And then if I were to plug in negative 5, I would get negative 2. But then this one would turn into a 0 right here. And so it would cause it to equal 0. So that's the 0 factor property. And we'll be using that quite a bit in this course. Okay, looking at uh, example B. So once again, I'm going to kind of space this out a little bit so we can look at this. So this is 5 times x times 10x minus 3. So what's going on is there's really three factors here. You have the 5, you have the x, and you have the 10x minus 3. And so there's really no way to make the 5 equal 0, so we just kind of ignore the 5. Now, what can I make, what can I substitute for x to make it 0? Well, 0. So that's one of our answers right there is x equals 0. Because if I were to plug in 0, I'd get 5 times 0, 0. And then times, if I plug in a 5 here, let's see, that turn into 50 minus 3 is 47. But it doesn't matter because I'd have 0 times 47, which would still make it equal to 0. Okay? And then let's see. Our last factor right here, what would make this expression equal 0? Well, just go ahead and set up an equation and solve it. So we'll, let's see. 10x minus 3 equals 0. We'll add 3 to both sides. That cancels out. 10x equals 3. Then we'll divide both sides by 10. And so we get x equals 3 over 10. So those are your two answers right there. 0 and uh, 3 over 10. Those are our two uh, possible solutions for this equation. Okay, looking at C, we have x plus 4 squared, which is really just, you know, x plus 4 times x plus 4. You don't have to break it apart, but that's basically what that square means, is the factor multiplied upon itself. So, we know that 0, if you have 0 to the second power, that would equal 0, right? So, what we're going to do is try to figure out what would cause this to equal 0 inside the parentheses that's being squared. So we'll go ahead and take that, set equal to 0, and solve just like the other ones. And so, let's see, we get x equals negative 4. And there you go, there's your answer. Now you might be thinking, well, up here you split it into 2, so that answer occurs twice. Well, the answer is kind of like yes and no. Um, yes, it has a thing called multiplicity, and we will talk about that in a later unit. But if a solution does occur more than once, you only list it one time. So even if a solution does appear more than once in an equation, you, you only list it once. Okay, so now that we got the zero factor property down, 
Now we're going to go solve some quadratics by quadratic equations by factoring. So that's the title of our notes here. And so what are quadratic equations? Well, quadratic equations are whenever we have a power of 2, whenever you have x squared and no higher. If you go higher, then those would be cubic and so on. So right now we're just going to focus on equations that have a squared variable within them. Okay. And so the typical format, the general form is right here. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C, they're just numbers, right? So the first thing you want to do is put these in general form by moving all the non-zero terms to one side, thereby obtaining zero on the other side. So we want it to look like this. So you can see number one is ready to go. But if you look at number three, all the non-zero terms are not all on one side, so we'll have to make some adjustments on number three in a moment. Then what we're going to do is factor completely. Always look for the GCF first, the greatest common factor. Once you factor it, then we apply the zero product principle that we just got done doing up above. Okay, Set each factor um, containing a variable equal to zero, and then solve those equations. And we can check them also. It's probably a good idea. Okay, so looking at this first one, what we're going to do here is we're going to do the A and M method. We're going to figure out what multiplies to give us negative 10, but add to give us negative 3. And so we're playing that little number game. So two numbers that multiply to give me negative 10, but add to give me negative 3. So one's positive, one's negative. The larger number is going to have to be negative because it adds to a negative. So let's see, negative 10, 1, but that adds to negative 9. Let's see, negative 5, positive 2, bingo, there we go. That adds up to that negative 3. So those are going to be the values that are going to help me create my factors right here. So this is going to be x minus 5 and x plus 2 equals 0. There we go. So now we factored it. Now that it's factored, we're going to use the zero factor principle. We're going to take each one of these and set them equal to zero and solve. So x minus 5 equals zero, x plus 2 equals zero. And so here we'll go ahead and add 5 to both sides. So x equals 5 is one of my solutions. And then we'll subtract 2 on both sides and so then x equals negative 2. Okay, so I'll go ahead and check this one. I'm not going to check them all just because it can be a little time consuming, but if you were to plug in 5, it would make it equal 0, and so I'll show that to you real quick. So let's see, 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 10. Does that indeed equal 0? Well, let's see, 5 to the second power, 5 times 5 is 25, minus 15, minus 10. And so I think you can see that here. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. And if you were to plug in negative 2, the same thing would happen. It would equal 0. So we factor this because if I don't factor that, and I'm trying to figure out what makes that equal 0, you might eventually be able to guess, but that would be a pretty challenging process. And so we use factoring to help us here. Okay. On... Number three, a lot of times students will move the x squared over, and you can do that if you want, but typically I like to keep the leading coefficient positive. I want to keep it positive. So what I'm going to do instead, and I like to sometimes draw a line to separate the two sides of the equation. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to set the right side equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides, and I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And so what that will do for me is it will knock that stuff out that nullifies that. The 8x nullifies, uh, the minus 8x nullifies the 8x, and the plus 15 will nullify that minus 15. So what's going on here is you can't really combine those. Those aren't like terms, so we'll just keep them separate. So x squared minus 8x plus 15, and then the right side is 0. And then now we'll go ahead and factor it using the A and M method. 
So two numbers that multiply to give us 15, but add up to negative 8. So this time they're going to have to both be negative so that they can add up to that negative 8, but the product's positive. So it should be a minus 5 and a minus 3. And then we'll take each one of those, set those equal to 0, and solve. So let's see, add 5. So x equals 5. And add 3. So then we get x equals 3. And those are my two solutions. All right, let's look at a couple more. Okay, so here, this one, uh, the factoring on this one's a little bit more challenging. And so if you have your own way of doing it, great. Um, what I showed in the previous videos, what I like to do is multiply the outer edges together. So 6 times negative 10 is negative 60. And then I grab the middle number right here, bring it over here so I can kind of focus on these two numbers. And so what I'm trying to do now is figure out two numbers that multiply. I'll call them A and B. Call them whatever you want. Multiply to give me negative 60, but then those two numbers add to give me 11. And so really, if you need to, you know, grab a calculator and start trying to figure out these the combination that you're looking for. So multiply to give me negative, but add up to positive 11. So the larger number has to be positive. So let's see, like 30 and negative 2, but the problem is that adds up to 28, so that's not going to work. Let's see, how about 20 and negative 3? No. Let's see, 15 and negative 4. Bingo. I got it right here. That Those multiply together to negative 60, and then those two numbers would add up to positive 11. So I'm in business. Okay. So the next step here in this process is we'll, we'll bring the 6x squared down. That's fine. Now we're going to split the 11 into those two numbers that I came up with over here. So that 11x will break up into a positive 15x and a minus 4x. And if I switch the order of those, it's fine. It won't make a difference um, in my answer. And I'll bring down the minus 10. And now I'm ready to do factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two and the second two. So on the first set, let's see, 6 and 15, I could pull out a 3, and I can pull out an x. And so I'll divide both of those by 3x. And so that'll leave me with 2x plus 5. Okay. Now looking at the second set, I need to have the same thing, 2x plus 5. Well. They're both negative, so I'm going to pull out a negative so I can change those signs. And then it looks like I need to cut them in half, so I'm going to pull out a negative 2. So when you divide those by negative 2, that turns into positive 2x plus 5, and that's what I needed. I need the two factors to match so they can finish the process. So now I'm going to factor out the 2x plus 5. So I pull out the... 2x plus 5, and then the 3x minus 2 is going to be my other factor. Okay, so I've factored it. And then once I factor it, now I have to do the zero product principle. So I take each one of those and set those equal to zero. So I'll do that over here where I have a little bit more room. So 2x plus 5 equals 0. 3x minus 2 equals 0. And then we'll just solve those and... I should be good to go. Okay, so negative 5 over 2 is one of my solutions. And looks like positive 2 thirds is going to be my other solution. Okay. All right, so I have another one of these. It's basically the same type of problem. The only difference is I have to set it equal to zero to get started. So what I'll do is I'll subtract eight from both sides. So let's see, we'll have three x squared minus two x minus eight equals zero. 
And then what we'll do is we'll multiply the edges right there. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And we'll grab that middle guy right here, negative 2. So the combination I'm looking for is two numbers. Just call them A and B or whatever you want. Just two variables that uh, multiply to give us negative 24, but then they also add up to negative 2. And so let's see, adds to a negative. So the larger number will be negative this time. So let's see, how about negative 8, positive 3? No, that adds up to negative 5, so that won't work. Let's see, negative 6 and positive 4. That looks like a winner to me. That looks like that will work. That multiplies to give me negative 24. It adds up to negative 2, so that's what I'm going to split the middle one into. So let's see, we got 3x squared, and then we'll split that into a minus 6x and a plus 4x. And then we'll bring the minus 8 down. Okay, so now let's see. We'll factor the first set. Looks like 3x. So that will leave us with x minus 2. And on the second set, it looks like we'll pull out a 4. And that will leave us with x minus 2. And then from here, we'll factor out that common factor of x minus 2. So we factor out the x minus 2, and what's left behind is the 3x plus 4. And so there we go, we factored it. So now we'll take each one of those factors and set them equal to 0 and solve, and we should be good. Okay, so our two answers are positive 2 and negative 4 thirds. So if you were to plug either one of those in, it would make the equation equal 8. So think about that. How could you have figured that out without factoring? It would have been nearly impossible, right? Especially the fraction one. So um, anyways, okay. So moving on. Got some more of these. They actually get a little bit easier as we move forward. They're different, but a little bit easier. So this time, there's only two terms. And so, let's see. How can I? Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to start with the greatest common factor. So I look at them. I'm like, okay, where are they both divisible by? And so it's going to be a 3 and an x. So I pull out 3x, and now leave me up behind with x plus 4. And so the whole kind of idea here is when you're factoring it is to get rid of those exponents. You want them... Basically, these have exponents, but they're understood as 1, and that's kind of the idea. Get it boiled down to just having exponents of 1, and then you're ready for the zero factorization property. And so it looks like we're ready to go. So our factors are 3, which we can't really do anything about. Then we have x, so that's always easy. That one's going to be 0. And then our other factor is going to be the x plus 4, so we got to set that equal to 0 and solve. So this one wasn't too bad. So our two answers are 0 and negative 4. And by the way, uh, when you're doing your homework, they're going to be using set notation. You're just going to put them in there with a comma between them. doesn't matter which one you write first. So 0, comma, negative 4, vice versa. And they'll have these little braces already there, so you don't have to type that part. Okay, let's see. I got just a couple more. Okay, so this one looks like a mess. So we're trying to figure out what would cause these two sides to be balanced, right? You want them to be equal to each other. That's a pretty challenging task the way it looks right now. So we want to kind of clean this up. So what we're going to do here is we want to set it equal to zero. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this to make life a little bit easier. So let's see. We'll have 2x squared minus 6x equals 5x squared minus 7x. Okay, that looks a little better. So now what we'll do is we'll set it equal to 0. Um, you could 
move everything to the left or the right. I'm going to go ahead and move everything to the right. So I'm going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. I'll do this in two steps so we make sure we don't get lost here. So this cancels out, and so I'm left with, be careful, I'm left with a negative 6x. Don't forget to bring the minus with it. Equals, let's see, so I had 5, but I'm taking away 2. So now I only have 3x squares, and I still have minus 7x right here. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish off setting the left side equal to 0. So we'll nullify the negative 6x by adding 6x to both sides. So that cancels out. So now I have 0 equals, so I still have the 3x squared. Now I had minus 7x, but I add 6 to it. So be careful, don't put minus 13. That's a common mistake. Um, so you have you have minus, but you're balancing off six of them. You're, so they nullify six of the minus seven, so you're left with a minus one x or just minus x. Um, you can put the one there if you want, but it's understood. Okay, so now we can, if you want to, you can flip it around and put the zero on the left side, um, on the right side, I'm sorry, if you really want to. Um, so, so I, I don't know, I just feel more comfortable having that on the right side, but it doesn't matter, you don't have to do that. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and factor out an x. So that'll leave us with 3x. Now be careful, you'll be left with a minus 1 right there. Okay, and then we've we've done what we have uh, were set out to do. What, what we did was we cleaned it up, and then we factored it to where we didn't have any high exponents. They're all powers of 1 now. And so then once we do that, now we just take each factor and set them equal to zero that involves a variable. So the first one's really easy. That's just going to be x equals zero. And then the other one, got a little bit of work to do on it, but it's not too challenging. So let's see, we'll add one, and then we'll divide by three. So our two solutions are 0 and 1 third. So once again, that would have been pretty hard to figure out without doing the process we did here, you know, setting it equal to 0 and then factoring. That would have been a little hard to figure out, especially the 1 third. Okay, let me see. Got 13, and then I think, yeah, this is my last one. Okay. So this one's kind of similar to the last one. We want to kind of clean up the sides and set one of them equal to zero. So what I have to do first is on the right side, I'm actually going to have to foil this. Okay, we haven't had to do that too much. We've been doing the opposite of foiling. So the way foil works is you multiply the first term by both of these. Okay, so let's see. That will give me 3x squared minus 3x. Then you take the second uh, term in the... Um, in the first binomial and do the same thing multiply by both of these so it'll be plus 2x minus 2 and let's see we still have the other side which is 7 minus 7x and then we can clean this up a little bit right here we'll clean that up combine those like terms so let's see minus 3x plus 2x that will be minus 1x, or minus x, and then we have our minus 2. And then like the last one, we'll go ahead and clean this up, set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And I'll do this in two steps just to make sure we're good. So let's see, 3x squared minus x. So let's see, that will become a minus 9. Okay. And then... Let's see, now we're going to go ahead and add 8x to both sides. And so let's see that. Or, oops. I don't know where I came up with the 8. Okay, 7. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so we're going to add 7x. Sorry about that. That will cancel out. So let's see, 0 equals 3x squared. So that would be plus 6x and then minus 9. Okay. So we want to solve this. So you might be thinking, okay, um, I just got to do the 3 times the not minus 9 and split the middle. 
Okay, you can do that if you want, but what I'm noticing is there is a GCF here. They're all divisible by three. Now, instead of just factoring it out, since I have an equal sign, I can actually just go ahead and divide everything by three, and that will make my life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just divide everything by three. It's a, one of my properties of equality. I can divide everything by a value. So let's see, zero divided by three, that's still zero. And then three divided by three, that's gonna become just x squared, then plus two x, and then minus three, okay? Wow, that's going to be a pretty easy problem now, okay? So if you look at the original problem, that looked pretty complicated. But now this should be pretty easy to factor. So if we're doing the A and M method, see so multiply to give me negative 3, add up to 2. That should probably be, what, 3 and negative 1, right? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Those two numbers add to give me positive 2. So this will factor into x plus 3 x minus 1, and then you take each one of those, set those equal to 0, and solve. Okay, so we get negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, so this was all about factoring here. So this will be this will be a, a skill that you will need throughout the whole course of college algebra so just keep that in mind